Amy Jones is public sector AI lead for EY. Amy, it's great to see you again. Nice to be here. Thank you. Um, you were writing recently about the four futures for government. What's the concept of the four futures before we get into what each of the four are? Yeah, absolutely. I was talking with one of our global AI leads at the firm, and they were talking specifically about how their clients are seeing such different potential outcomes. Um, and we hear a lot from illuminaries in the field, and each of them have uh, a very specific idea of what's going to happen, but we don't think any of it's predisposed. Um, and what struck me is how much potential impact government decisions today are going to have on those outcomes. Um, and maybe not peanut butter spread, um, but in very specific ways across different industries. And so we took that concept and we really thought about what are the mechanisms by which government decisions are going to influence that? And, and what can we kind of help educate our clients on um, from a, an outcomes perspective? The first future is growth. And that, I imagine, has to do with how agencies decide what they're going to do and then scale what they start out with. Am I on the right track there? Yeah, this one's the most optimistic. It's like we keep rolling and everything's great and we're all happy. And, you know, certainly on the edges, we're questioning um, the, the very specifics of it. But in general, everyone's moving in the same direction. We're rowing the boat. Um, and so we're seeing incremental growth. Uh, the, the value of that one is without a major disruptor, we'll continue to gain steam and momentum and that kind of exponential value will be realized. Um, it's assuming also, though, that there's not a massive disruption in the market. So I'll, I'll use that word uh, neutrally because it could be positive or it could be negative. And, and that kind of leads us to a few, a few of the other options. We'll talk about those in a moment. Yeah. But does it matter whether that disruption would be positive or negative as to how it would influence the direction in which the government goes with AI? Absolutely. Um, cat's out of the bag. This is a really disparate value chain right now. There's a lot of folks that have picked this up. Um, those investments in the frontier labs have created a lot of incredible options. Um, so I certainly don't think that there is a linear correlation. Um, but we saw, for example, with nuclear energy, um, there was a concentration of investment. It was very specific geographically as well. And then some major events disrupted that for a very long time. It didn't change the value of nuclear energy or what we could gain out of it, but it certainly changed the risk profile, the policy, um, the willingness to invest in it. Uh, and, and so, you know, I don't think that we're in a spot where we could reconstrain the AI models, uh, but we could certainly see a similar policy shift if there were a disruptor that were negative. The second future that you and your colleagues discuss is transforming, transformation. Um, what's the landscape look like under that one? I think this one is uh, very interesting. This is an opportunity, we, you know, agentic is a buzzword, but what does that mean? Um, it means uh, allowing the computers to work more synonymously and, and closely with humans um, to get some of these tasks done, to, to optimize and maximize the investments. Um, and so maybe in the transform future, we're not just improving what we're seeing, we're not just expanding the capacity or meeting today's needs with constituents and constrained resources. We're actually rethinking the way that services are delivered. We're changing the way that we're thinking about lives and livelihood and what that means. Um, and it's opening up a lot of opportunities to redistribute resources, not just at the technology level to meet demands, but also maybe kind of more globally from a government services perspective to think differently about how we meet people where they are. About five or six years ago, I took a picture when I was uh, going to visit my son in college of a road that was called Cowpath Road. And it was obviously now a paved road. And I think of that every time I think about the way that government thinks about transformation, that that's exactly what they don't wanna do is just pave whatever way they've already been going on things. It sounds like that's what that future is addressing. Absolutely, yeah. Maybe in that example, you'd, you'd have some uh, flying cars. The third future is constraining. And you alluded to this a moment ago in, when you were talking about transformation, but uh, a constrained environment sounds like probably the least desirable of all four of these potential futures. Yeah, and there's a nuance we'll talk about between the, the third and the fourth future. 
Um, constraint really suggests that we don't have the resources to continue to keep up with the potentiality of this. Um, you know, the Frontier Labs are working on what their economic model is going to look like. Um, government is investing heavily in having these capabilities embedded. Um, but we don't know what we don't know to some extent about the investment that's required. I know there's a lot of smart people that are putting their heads together, but if budget, if policy, um, if some of those kind of things that, that uh, are resource intensive don't align, there's a chance that that outcome is not realized either in the growth or the transform um, because of externalities, not because of the capability of the the technology itself. Mm -hmm. What are the markers that you think will indicate whether uh, the government as a whole or individual organizations within the government are headed down that one, since that sounds like, as I said, one of the least desirable ones here? Yeah, you know, efficiency is a big buzzword in the government right now, but um, this idea of efficiency is a survival mechanism right now. We're, we're running into massive constraints on people, workforce, budget, um, and I think one of the outcomes that we're seeing that's hopeful is more collaboration and coordination, more thoughtfulness about how these structures need to be built. Um, and I don't just mean the technology itself, but I mean all of the components around it, the budget, the policy, et cetera, um, for more shared investment. Uh, you know, I, I spent a lot of time in DOD and Intel, and they have this um, security onion is kind of what they call it. And they talk a lot about how um, you, you keep information siloed because just the aggregation of that information might be problematic. But a lot of what we see is then you also don't aggregate the investments and you don't aggregate the innovation. And so those silos become less about the data and more about everything that surrounds the data and all the, the, the business of the data. Um, and so I think that if we can start to differentiate between those two things, uh, there's going to be real value and, and we will be less constrained <laughs> than otherwise. The fourth future that you're writing about is control. And you write about it this way. AI under this one is focused on compliance, risk mitigation, and safety rather than expansion. This one I ranked right behind constraint as, as maybe the least desirable, second least desirable of these. And you said there was a nuance that connected these two. Tell me about that nuance. Yeah, control to me is the defensive stance. So constraint might be folks that are proactive and interested in um, uh, you know, exponential growth and those kinds of things, but are running into those hard walls around them with resources. Control is a scenario where we are using it only to identify adversarial attacks. Um, and that's not just at the, at the kind of national security level, that's on our data. Um, and we're really hesitant to use it for innovation. Um, we're thinking about how legal and policy implications are going to um, control the, the, the use of the technology so that it doesn't get out too far too fast. Um, what's interesting about that one is I, the follow-up often is, um, okay, so what do we need to do to get away from that? And a lot of it is traditional strength in our policy. It's continuing to focus on data security and privacy, um, personal autonomy over your own data, those types of things. I think if we can get back to basics on what's allowed in the systems and with the systems, um, we can really allow people to innovate and maybe push closer to transform ideally, but certainly growth. Yeah. And, and that's where I wanted to wrap up is the first two sound like you would be probably pretty satisfied if that's the result that you got as the leader of an organization. And the last two, you probably wouldn't be really thrilled with if those were the two outcomes that you had. What are the decisions that organizations and government should be thinking about today to reach one of those two outcomes, ideally transform, and then the techniques to maximize, to make sure that your end goal here is 2030 is the timeline that you're thinking about by the time we get five years out from where we are today, that you're driving in the right direction. Yeah, one size doesn't fit all is what I will say. So success does not always look like transform. Um, and, and that's intentional because these different agencies have very different organizational requirements. They're meeting people at different needs. Um, and so some of them growth would actually be better than transformation because that would, that would mean meeting everyone where they were right now. Um, and maybe not reimagining certain things. And, and we can kind of go down that path, uh, get, get a little interesting if we think that all the way through. Um, but for me, the idea here 
is that you have to have consistent and concerted efforts to ensure that your policy, your budget, your governance, your operational model is leading you down the path that you desire. Um, because there's a lot of unintended consequences if you start to stray from that. And having that structure up front is going to help people stay focused. Um, I do think that for most agencies, there's there's a limited number that maybe control and constrain might make sense. But um, generally speaking, growth and transformation is the goal. Amy, it's terrific to talk to you about these. Thank you for sharing them with me. Thank you so much.